Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Urban Spirituality. My name is Prash, Prash K, and I am with a very dangerous man, one of the <laughs> pro possibly the most dangerous guest we've had on this show, because he comes from the lineage, the martial arts lineage of Bruce Lee, the legendary Bruce Lee himself. He is a martial arts master in the art known as Wing Chun, Kung Fu, to those of you who may have heard of it. He also has a raft of academic qualifications, including a law degree, an MBA, the CFA certified financial advisor exams. Somewhere along the way, he has been a director in the city, a consulting and technology director, He's the CEO of his own company. He's a martial arts master and teacher. There's so much more to say. And he's a family man. So he's walking his walk, bringing up amazing children. Please show your love for the very special and very dangerous Angel Dobardzia. <laughs> Thank you, Fresh. <laughs> That's going to be worth a few martial arts class free lessons, right? Yes, absolutely. Angel, thank you for being with us. Take a bow. Tell us something, man. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's wonderful. What you're doing is wonderful. It's, I'm delighted to, uh, to be here, have this conversation. Hopefully, uh, I can share my perspective on some of the common challenges we all face as we grapple with... Uh, with life and, and, and our journey and, you know, what lessons I've learned and uh, if any of them are useful to uh, the audience, I'd be delighted. And Gil, aside with all these different hats that you wear and, and as per the introduction, take us back to, to the young Angel um, in, in your home country from Macedonia. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about the journey that, has led you to the path that you follow now and the skills and the interest that you've accumulated over the years? Uh, uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting journey. I was always uh, a very bright kid and uh, school was never a problem. So I always did really great at school, but um, I was also uh, pretty good at sport, but I felt like I needed a bit, bit of a better balance. and. Um, a sort of throughout high school, as you grow up, as you go into other lessons, I, I encountered this wonderful martial art um, that was practiced by these guys. It looks so interesting, nothing like I've seen before. Right. And uh, I was 16 when I started practicing martial art, and I've been doing it for you know over two decades since. Uh, in the meantime, you know, you get on with lots of other things in life. You, you know, you, you, you have an academic career, you do masters, uh, but uh, martial arts stayed with me and it, it's been that anchor uh, in life that gave me that not just physical, but mental, but also spiritual balance uh, because life is about, you know, enjoying every day, but also having a longer term goal for me. And, 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 and having the ability, the discipline, the resilience to, to sort of put something towards that, those long-term goals. Right. It's one of the key benefits for me, uh, uh, for me from, from martial arts. And, and the things that I did in, on the academic side, on the professional side, uh, fed nicely into the martial arts side and vice versa. Uh, and, and there's also a mental and spiritual side to martial arts, not just a physical exercise. And I'm sure we'll, we'll go into that. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I was always the curious one. And uh, martial art sort of brought me into a completely new world of, of exploring a side of you that you know, don't normally do in, in an academic or even in a, in a sports context. Right. So... You, I mean, martial arts aside, you went on an academic journey. How did you find a way to synthesize 
your passion for martial arts, which you did more than the average attendee. You weren't just a tourist. And I know you use this word, you know, you, 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 you like this word, tourists. You weren't just a tourist in martial arts. You really <laughs> took it seriously. You come from the lineage. Uh, your, your own master, uh, or one of your masters, uh, is in the lineage of Bruce Lee and Ip Man. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, my master back in Macedonia started with William Chung, uh, who was a friend and teacher of Bruce Lee and, and, and student of Yip Man. Um, so uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was great to learn from someone who had that sort of um, uh, instruction. And, and later I, I have met and hosted a run master, William Chung, as well. Uh, uh, over here and, and, and learn from him and studied with him. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in if you go into something, you put everything into it or you don't do it at all. Uh, I think a lot of the time we, we touch on something, we scratch the surface uh, and we don't really experience the real beauty of it. Uh, to, to, get, to get the real pleasure of doing something, you've got to, got to put in um, uh, a little bit more time and effort than, than your average. And I, I was fortunate that I, I did have the time and, and I could enjoy it. Uh, while I was still studying intensely uh, at high school and university, the nice thing about sort of doing something like this is, you know, you, if you put in energy into it, it actually gives you more energy to bring back into your um, the other areas of your life as well, right? You get more focus, you get, you know, uh, energy and, and, and uh, yeah, it, it was not too difficult. Obviously, it also keeps you away from some more crazy things that you do as a student. Uh, if yeah, you yeah. spend your time, uh, a little bit more time practicing and, and, and studying than, uh, than, than, you know, doing all sorts of crazy things. But, but yeah, so uh, for me, the two actually fed into each other and, uh, you, you know, we, we also did during the study, not just learning a martial art, but we experimented with competing in, in proper full contact kick, kickboxing uh, type of competitions where, you know, due to the power of this martial art, we, we won quite easily against people who have been training uh, kickboxing for years and years uh, and we prepared for just a few months. Uh, we applied the principles of uh, this martial arts. So, so yeah, no, I, I, I think for me, at that time, as you, as you, you know, you develop and you establish your personality, having, uh, having a martial arts and, and a community of martial artists and, and masters to, to work with, well, has, has added a huge new dimension and, and really helped my development um, in a much more balanced way uh, than, than, you know, uh, than I've seen some of my, um, uh, some, some of the people my age at that time, where, where you know, you grow up really fast and it can be quite confusing and scary. Yeah, absolutely. And, but the thing is that you found a way to synthesize the lessons and the, the techniques, the wisdom and the philosophy of the martial arts that you've done and found a way to almost transmute those into things that you can use in your career. I mean, yeah. you've done two degree, you did an MBA, you did a law degree. Can you share a little bit of an insight how some of those martial arts skills and wisdom helped you in your career? Um, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, the first thing you, you to achieve any goal, um, the first thing you've got to have is, is uh, that discipline and patience and uh, so, so you, you know, uh, if something is important to you, like mastering a martial art or finishing a degree or, or, or getting a good grade, and, and martial arts gives you that ability and the, the, you know, the, um, the habit of, of putting, putting energy and your focus and discipline, which is, which is really important. The other thing that you get is, uh, is how you deal with setbacks. You know, we all have a lot of setbacks in life, right? Everyone gets knocked down now and again. Right. Um, what martial arts uh, te teach you is you keep going. You pick yourself up, you know, <laughs> and you keep learning, you keep fighting. Um, whereas, um, and, and taking that sort of attitude of, you know, uh, 
picking yourself up from, from your, from your knocks uh, as you get them through life, building that resilience, it's tremendously powerful. It's absolutely tremendously powerful. I've seen, and personally, and I've also seen uh, in, with, with other friends, people that had that resilience and that uh, ability to pick themselves up from, from a knock uh, have went much further than you know, so, sometimes more talented people. Uh, but, but, you know, got dragged down with a simple setback. And so um, that building that internal resilience, um, building that belief in your own ability, in your ability to uh, not just achieve goals, but, you know, face setbacks, make mistakes, and then, you know, learn from those. So that sort of learning from your mistakes, that resilience to pick yourself up when you're down, uh, it's tremendous. It's absolutely tremendous. And, right. and you know, um, to, to, to basically to, you know, you learn to adapt to whatever life throws at you while you're trying to achieve your goals that are important to you. So let's talk about, let's, let's elaborate about this because we talked about how you synthesize it. How does martial arts help you in this area of learning to set and achieve long-term goals? amid the mass, you know, distractions and the temptations for instant gratification, because that's the era we're living in, right? People yeah. want gratification quickly because they're feeling a lot of pain in their lives and they need a hit, a quick hit. And at the same time, they want distraction from stuff that's actually meaningful because distraction is often a lot easier than dealing with stuff. So, and that's a distraction. So... It is. I, I think uh, we live in a really... Uh, exciting time but at the same time a difficult time uh, because you know of smartphones and social media and and all these devices that we have um, uh, it almost it becomes difficult to um, to have a deep thought and separate yourself uh, and so on so I think uh, for me uh, one thing that you realize is as you practice martial art, as you get into a session, whether it's half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half, as you get to that feeling of flow without distractions, you've, you, firstly, you've got to be there to, to really do it. If you, if you don't concentrate, especially if you're sparring, you know, you get hit. Uh, so you've got to yeah. do it without distractions. So you take that attitude of facing, being in the moment for a period of time. And then... Um, that feeling, you know, that sort of attitude focus um, when you take it to the rest of your life, to your work, uh, and even when you think about long-term goals, um, we quite often tend to, tend to pro procrastinate. Yeah, this email pops up or this sort of WhatsApp message pops up and we don't deal with the issues that matter at the right. moment. Um, whereas, um, you know, what, what I found is, is, is if you, if you experience that feeling of flow that you get, say in practice and martial arts, then you look for it in your other areas of life, uh, mm. uh work. So, so for me, um, you know, you, 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 you find a way to adapt in this modern life, um, to that. And, and, you know, one of the things that I've taken in is you cut the distractions for a period of time. So switch your female for a few hours so you can do some deep work. And it's actually, there's a lot of research these days that suggests that, um, you know, the, the sort of parts of our brain that, that, that are focused on deep work and creative work and, and uh, parts of our brain that, that we use to deal with emails and, and WhatsApp and social media are very different and switching between the two is, you know, makes you completely unproductive. So, so being able to focus on one area and resist the temptation to check that email for a couple of hours or check that social messaging actually makes you much more productive. So you can do a lot more and better work in that period of time if you take that focus and discipline that you build through practice of martial arts. And similarly, um, in your personal life, you know, having uh, that little space, whether it's an hour or two without a TV or without a, a, a mobile phone, to really give attention to your own thoughts or to, to the people around you um, um, quite often can be helpful in actually making those real connections and seeing what's missing mm. rather than, you know, um, being constantly distracted with that next thing, which 
we get quick sort of kick of uh, dopamine, which is the same kick that we get from, you know, coffee or alcohol or drugs or gambling, yeah. but, but, you know, you don't quite, de- you know, uh, deal with, um, so we become, we become addicts with those little kicks that modern communication give us, but you actually miss on the bigger picture, the more important things and doing the deeper things in life. And, and to me, martial arts, uh, you know, by isolating you for that short period of time where you practice, where you look for that phone, where you've got no choice but to actually give it attention, you know, you use it as a tool to take it the rest of life and have deeper, uh, more meaningful relationship and bit of space and, and also, you know, doing deeper and better quality work in shorter space of time. I mean, it's anyone who's switching between email and proper work can tell you that it takes three or four times as long than when you give, give a, a, a piece of work just a couple of hours without distractions. All right. So look, I mean, for sure, that's a lesson that we can pick up. I, I want to talk, aside from distractions, I want to talk about the importance of constant learning um, and self-improvement. And I think one of the things that certainly from my experience in martial arts, um, and I clearly, I've been more of a hobbyist than what you've done as a, as a person who's taken it on to a master level. But even in my own journey on martial arts, I found that doing this since I was, you know, 12 or 13 years old, there's always a, a desire to learn constantly. And whether you're a hobbyist or whether you're doing it full time or however serious or not you are with a hobby, such as martial arts, the, the, the principle of constant learning is actually super valuable and actually then can play out into other areas of your life to improve that. And you obviously see spirit masters who, martial arts masters who are in their 70s, 80s, Danny and Asanto, you know, William Chung, some of these senior people, Ip Man, of course, who are in their senior years, and yet they're pretty youthful and they have a sense of wanting to learn. Can you share a little bit about your perspective on constant learning and self-improvement and taking that martial arts mindset for the average listener here, the average viewer, and how we can apply that? Uh, I think that's a great point. Um, uh, I mean, one of the things that we all do since the moment we're born is we learn. Um, the challenge is, you know, we learn, otherwise we wouldn't be able to speak, socialize, and, and do work and so on. The challenge is at a certain age, uh, that capacity to, to learn and, and the attitude and the mental side changes from I've, I've learned and I can slow down and so on. Whereas um, uh, martial arts uh, as, a, as, a, as a skill is, is something where, where it's very visible what you're learning, if you know, you, you almost have a feeling you're either learning and progressing, or you are slipping backwards, and 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 there is no there's no way to stay in one place. And one the same place. applies to life and all aspects of life. You're either improving your skills at work, your knowledge, your relationships, or you, you know you're sliding backwards. But we think, you know, or sometimes we tell ourselves that we can keep them stable. But but in martial arts, it's very it's very visible. Um, you either whether you're progressing or, or you're moving back, you know whether you're doing forms or whether you're sparring and so on. So, so that attitude that you 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 look, you look to always improve, or if you're not, you're gonna find out pretty soon. <laughs> um, um, and and you know that builds a certain attitude of humbleness that, you know, to learn, you've got to be open to your limitations, to your mistakes, to the things that you need to improve, to be honest with yourself, where your shortcomings are, and, and, and obviously proud of your strength. But, you know, um, there is a saying uh, in martial arts and in most other things is that, you know, the, your average players play to their strengths, whereas the top players keep working on their weaknesses. And, and so in martial arts, you always try and work on your, on your weaker sides in order to, make a, to become a more complete martial artist. But, you know, so, so that attitude and all those uh, mental qualities of humbleness, of openness, of being self-critical, but also balancing it with, you know, what you do well is, is something that I find it really valuable to keep and, and, and take to the rest of your life and, and sort of 
you know, when you apply that to work and personal life relationships, you know, life is very interesting. You know, you're always looking to learn something. You're always looking for fresh challenge at work. You're always looking um, for fresh insights. Uh, and you're looking to surround yourself as well with people that help you grow and learn and, right. and improve. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you find that you spend less time with people that drag you back. And so you become this progressive uh, in, in both work and, 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 and personal life because, you, you know, you're constantly driving forward. You're looking for fresh insights. You're looking to improve your skills and knowledge and so on. So that is, that is really the, this attitude. And once it becomes part of your being, part of your, of your mental and physical makeup, that, that is something, you know, stays with you and, and you know, you, you, you do it, not subconsciously, but, you know, it, it, it becomes something that you just do. And, and, you know. So do you mean to say that, and, and, and imagine, you know, let's say somebody there doesn't want to do martial arts. Uh, how can, are you, is the principle that you're trying to elicit here uh, or convey rather that um, the, the, the mood of wanting to constantly improve oneself and uh, strive for better and self-learning comes about through the embracing of a hobby or a passion like martial arts. It could be something else, right? It could be anything. No, martial arts is just, just one thing that, that teaches you that, but it could be anything. I think many people have it without coming even close to martial arts so i i think you know i mean people um uh, people talk and there's there, there are books about fixed mindset and growth mindset and what i'm describing here is that growth mindset and and most of us are um, uh, uh there's a great book uh by psychologists called you know, growth mindset which which sort of positions what I've described in a much more academic context and, and most of us are a mixture of this fixed and growth mindset in different aspects of our life. Uh, for example, we could be in a growth mindset and trying to learn yeah. you know, hobbies, but at work we find it boring and, and sort of we don't improve. What this does and what martial arts do is, is they connect you with different aspects of yourself and, and you, you, know, you become almost a growth mindset in broad and broad areas because you're more honest with yourself where you, um, um, where you, uh, where you come. But, but as I said, you know, that, that is that growth mindset of looking, uh, looking for those learning experience and, and, you know, looking for anything that, that you do, not just as a win lose, but as an opportunity to learn and get better as you go through life. It, it is, it is really, really important. That's what gives it, um, gives a lot of activities a pleasure. Whereas with a fixed mindset today, the um, mental framework is very much you either have it or you don't. Right. Uh, you either you are a great uh, interviewer or, or you're not, uh, or, right. or you are a great martial artist, you're not. Whereas, you know, research shows it, and my experience in many aspects of life is that you know uh, it, it couldn't be for. And we all start from a slightly different level, but yeah, totally. everything can be improved through work and and sort of through application. And, and that is, you know, that is the essence of, of what learning martial arts teaches you, building that growth mindset that you can take everywhere into your life. That's awesome. So let, we've talked about growth. We've talked about self-learning and how martial arts can act as a meta, metaphor for constant learning and improvement. We've talked about avoiding distractions. We've talked about focusing on something without technology and all of these sorts of good positive habit traits coming out through cultivation yeah. of martial arts. Let's talk about balance because yeah. the average person, they may have a family um, or they're wanting to have a family. They're needing to juggle their personal professional lives, family lives. They may have a social life. Uh, then they have financial obligations. What in your 25 or more years of experience through martial arts can you share here that allows people to find a way to find a sort of balance um, between physical, mental, and spiritual strength? Uh, this could be a very long conversation, but <laughs> to summarize... Some, some insights, some, some to, glimpses. To, to summarize, I, I, I think, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we all have a hierarchy of needs, right? 
uh, Maslow uh, talks about it, right? Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. Um, exactly, the Maslow and so on. Uh, we've all seen the, the, the sort of the pyramids and so on. So um, at a basic level, we, we want to stay healthy and, and, and physically, you know, taken care of. So we want to stay healthy, look good and, and so on and fed and sheltered and so on. And, and, and then we want to, you know, do all these needs on top. Uh, so, and, yeah. and we all at a, at a, at a different level of, and, and at the top are the self-actualization needs of you know, making an impact and changing the world and, and all those great things that, um, and that we want to achieve. But so, so I think having a balance is, you know, firstly being aware of those, that hierarchy of needs, obviously if your basic needs are not met, you cannot talk about changing the world. So, uh, you know, making sure that you're aware of where they are, but having the balance, having the physical and the mental and the spiritual balance, it, 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 it's about firstly, um, to me is, is aligning your goals with where you spend your time. And this is where there's a disconnect for most of us, and I include myself, because it's a dynamic balance that we're constantly seeking. So what I mean by that is, you know, we quite often have goals, um, whether we're conscious or subconscious, you know, we wanna, we wanna sort of save enough, we wanna get married or whatever, uh, you wanna buy that house or to retire and so on, um, or, or build that skill or become a martial art master. Um, but then, you know, firstly, those goals are at a different level of importance and we're not, we're not always rating them in importance. And so, you know, just the simple exercise of writing what our goals are and how important they are on a, on a scale and, and which are short term, which are longer term is a good start to find that balance. And the second part is looking at where you spend your time relative to those goals. Right. And if, if you're not spending most of your time to your most important goals, then and you're, out of balance. <laughs> you're out of balance with what you're trying to do. And, and, you know, whether you're aware of it or not, you know, we get, we get frustrated basically because, you know, we want to be healthy, but we're getting fat because we're not exercising enough. Um, so, and, and our goals are in a disconnect because we don't give, sufficient time to that important goal or you know we want to we want to sort of um uh, progress at work get that promotion but you know we're not really you know putting enough focus we get distracted at work all the things that we talked about we don't produce enough deep quality works to make a difference to that and 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 you know we do a lot of so so having that um physical um strength and but also mental clarity and, and right. balance actually and and being free of distractions to come back to the earlier point to have the time and to think what are the important goals to my life what are the priority of those goals and then think right. about where we spend our time meeting those goals and what do we need to readjust the time so you know if something is the, is very important to you, you should be spending most of your time on it and then you know the next chunk of time is to the second most important goal and so on so 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 um so to me that is the key key to balance um and 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 that is that is again where martial arts with me and and other things like meditation is is teaches you gives you that space to step back from your daily hustle bustle and 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 you know do something else and then look back at your life with a fresh pair and, you know am i on the right track do i have the right balance and my are my goals aligned is my time aligned to those goals and so on okay i like that Let, let's let's since you mentioned it let's just touch on that one of your one of your hobbies one of your big passions alongside martial arts is meditation and and i know that you are a uh, avid um, practitioner and a follower of the teachings of the Taoist traditions, uh, one of the, the most, the, one of the foremost authorities in the world, living legend, Mantak Shia, uh, who is a Taoist master. Uh, what glimpses or realizations would you care to share here about meditation and that practice through the traditions that you've learned from? Uh, really good point. I think Master Master uh, Chia is has got a system that works fine. Um, 
for me, I, I think, uh, I mean, meditations and mindfulness, uh, there are so many different systems in the same way that there are martial arts and some of them overlap. A lot of martial arts which have meditation aspects and so on. I think what is great about um, Master Chia's uh, Qigong practice and system, the healing Tao, as, as he calls it, is that um, um, it in, integrates, it, it sort of balances, you know, the physical, the mental, um, the spiritual energy, even sexual energies, um, sort of, you know, bring them together, making you aware and, you know, building that stronger, strong physical body, but also balancing uh, those internal energies, you know, and, and constantly looking to, uh, um, uh, to enhance and purify right. uh, uh, sort of your body. So again, you have that sort of, you know, our body and, and our mind is a vehicle to, to the things that we want to achieve in life. So you have a good vehicle <laughs> that will take you very fast and nice. very efficiently to where you need to go. Right. Uh, so, and, uh, and again, the practices are themselves quite efficient. So you don't spend hours and hours of practicing, but, you know, short, quick uh, bursts of practice and meditation uh, actually give you, give you enough power and, and, and fuel uh, and clarity. To, to get there. So I, yeah. I'm a big believer in, in you know, if it's a goal, you look for the most efficient way to achieve it, uh, whether it's in martial art, in meditation, or even in, you know, in, in, in fitness and conditioning where, you know, high intensity interval training does, does exactly the same versus some other things. So, so you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's one of many, but it works well and it's a very efficient way of, of getting the way you need to get. I love that. I mean, I think that's such a highlight and it's something that we all, it's a cost subject, I think close to many listeners hearts, uh, the need for meditation, the sheer need for switching off from technology, from people and from our mental traffic in order to get to a place of stillness and clearly a practice like you're describing with which, in, which embraces mindfulness, which embraces breathing techniques and other aspects, the healing Tao here in this particular case is a great vehicle then. Um, and do you see that benefit coming out academically in your career uh, where you're needing to be actually very switched on? Like that's almost a dichotomy, right? You're needing to switch off here, but then you need to be really switched on, you know, in your day job or whatever it is. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, um, for 20 years, I, 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 I've worked and I still work in the, in the telecoms media and technology industry as a research consulting director uh, for the big firms. And, uh, you know, having that internal side and, and awareness uh, and balance to, to go into a room of senior executives and, and sort of having the confidence to challenge them on certain things, it, it just takes a certain, certain belief and, and meditation martial art has has given me that sort of personally that grounding to to go in and do it with confidence, but also with humbleness and 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 sort of in an energy that you that you you know uh, in a way that that you can you, you know you can you can achieve what you need to do while being still respectful uh, to whatever uh, uh, sort of uh, the egos, the charisma of, of the, these very senior executives in, in, in the room. And, and quite often there is a mental um, or energy level um, dynamic going on where, where you're being tested, you're being felt, whether you, you actually really have it in, in, right. in terms of beliefs and so on. And, you know, having the grounding, having the internal balance actually gives you that, added credibility and the added uh, strength when you say, well, actually, you are on the wrong path with this technology strategy. Um, uh, and, and it's, you know, because of this analysis, but it's, right. you know, it, the way you deliver that message uh, gives, gives an added credibility. So it absolutely helps with what you do uh, in, in every aspect of your life. Love that. Love that. And it makes so much sense as well. Um, I, I wanted to just touch on one other area and that was around building a strong mind um, through martial arts because martial arts on the one hand you know everybody considers it to be about discipline and developing an, an ability to defend oneself but isn't a whole aspect of 
mental of, of resilience in life, mental toughness. It's a yes. mental self-defense. Um, and is there any th insight that you could share that might help people to develop that? Yeah, I think we talked about, I think, I mean, just building the habit of, you know, setting aside three or four times or however many times you can set aside um, of your life, um, of, of your week um, to go aside and practice and, and improve yourself. Even when sometimes you don't feel really like doing it, but having the discipline to get yourself and do it. Uh, builds that resilience and discipline uh, that, that that you then take and and then once you're into it as you develop your um, as you develop your physical ability you know uh, in some ways martial arts is is, is learning a, a complicated foreign language but no it's not only mental but it's physical and right. and there's all sorts of aspects so as you get into difficult parts of the grammar of this language, or as you get into some difficult conversations with some people that ask you some difficult questions, i.e. in a sparring situation, as you learn to, uh, to come up with answers to those difficult questions, and as you get more fluent in this, using the foreign language analogy, um, uh, you know, um, as you make mistakes, you put in, you write your first essay again in this foreign language. You get shot down by yeah. this, uh, and and you know building your 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 confidence that you actually you you do believe in what you are you are making changes. So all those things, and I'm speaking here figuratively in that foreign language analogy, but you know, I'm talking about you know whether you're aspiring or learning or taking an exam or failing an exam or failing a grading, all those things that you do in Russia, that builds resilience. And as you do that over a period of time, you know, you, it becomes part of you that, you, you know, you will require discipline, you will make mistakes, you will not get everything right. But, you know, if you are humble and honest and you uh, look honestly at those mistakes and you keep learning, eventually you will get there. And that's what you take, uh, that's what you take elsewhere nice. in your life. And, and, and you know you face the same challenges with that attitude, attitude nice. and, and more than the not you will do better than you would have done uh, without that mental framework okay thanks I've got a couple of rapid fire questions I hope you'll indulge me Angel Go ahead. what scares you what keeps you up at night <laughs> I sleep pretty well <laughs> um, I, I, I think a lot of the time um, I'm a big believer in the power of our subconscious mind and and uh, you know there are some sometimes some challenges where you, you know the phrase that sort of the phrase you know uh, seek and you shall find and mm -hmm. and ask and you shall be answered and you know it is so true for the power of the subconscious mind some problems you need to frame them and then you need to wait and, and the answer may come to you a day or two after mm -hmm. the subconscious mind would have worked if you framed it well enough. And, um, and again, you know, my, my fear is, is I may not be able to crack some difficult problems like that even by giving them enough time. But most of the time, <laughs> if something's really important to you and, and you frame it clearly enough, um, uh, you either you know in a in a sort of conscious whiteboarding session or in a subconscious two days down the line in the gym, you know the answer does pop up pop out to you. Okay, I like that. I like that, and I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have any superhero power, what would it be, and what would you do with it? <laughs> uh, um, I would be immortal, <laughs> so I can keep on learning and growing forever. <laughs> You'd be a model. I like that. Okay, so you take immortality. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice. What one piece of advice would you give the twenty-year-old Angel if he was here today, <laughs> listening to this show? Uh, that is a really good point. Hmm. 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. So I think there's one last thing. That, um, you could say, and I'll take the compliment and go, you could say that you're good with your Kung Fu and I'm, I'm kind of good with my tongue Fu there. <laughs> <laughs> I could, would never disagree with that, Prash. You know that. <laughs> We've had, a, we, we, we've had a good journey here. Folks, if you're tuned in, I'm just, just a slight deviation here while Angel thinks of the answer to that question. Um, <laughs> God knows he's made a lot of screw ups, so there could be a lot of advice for his 20 year old self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um... <laughs> but um, it, it was a pleasure to have met Angel. Uh, it's a funny old story because he moved on, he moved into the, our street and I had no idea he did what he did. And there was a situation one night, the day before Halloween, there were four guys walking uh, in a strange way on our street, smoking something. One of them looked like they were carrying a weapon. I came to clear the trash um, from, my, uh, from, from the house and he happened, Angel here happened to clear the trash, come out at the same time to clear his rubbish. And these four guys started beating up on a young kid. Angle got straight in there. And he, within two, three minutes, he just had them all on the floor. And they were crying, bruised, you know, blood spattered. And I just kind of walked up to him and I high-fived him. I said, dude, that was awesome. Can you teach me that? What's your name? He says, my name is Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> all right. All right. It didn't, quite, it didn't quite all work out that way. <laughs> but we got talking, we had a friendly neighborhood conversation as you do. I welcomed in our, on, on our street and you know, as it turned out, he described his passion for martial arts and little did I know that, you know, he is a veritable, not only is he a great martial artist and I've seen him, um, but, and I've studied with him now. So I know he's a great teacher. He's actually a really good teacher. And, um, and God, I got to give that to you, man. There's a lot of people who do martial arts and who are very good at it, but to teach, and to be a coach and to impart that wisdom in a way that makes it applicable um, and accessible to different kinds of people at different skill levels. That's just, that's an art in itself. And I think it was one of the joys I had, um, uh, you know, and not, not to, not to forget your, your, your keen sense of humor, you know, even, even though you're Macedonian, I mean, you got one. That's amazing. <laughs> I thought this was going all so well. <laughs> so, t <laughs> sorry, man. I had to throw you off. Your, your, your twenty-year-old self. I, I still fondly remember the martial arts sessions in your back garden. By the way, I still have forearms with bruises because of what you did. That my forearms were bruised right here, all bruised, all bruised. Look, see that bruise? That's from that's from you. That that that's from training with you. <laughs> It can't, it can't be possibly true because you haven't trained with me for years now. <laughs> the bruises stay there, man. I, I, I was your first student, man. Tell, tell him, tell him, tell, tell everybody listening in. Who is your first student here, man? <laughs> right. I think I can see a question on the chat line. I wonder. Yeah. Okay. Let's take, let's, let, okay. Let's take that. Um, no, no, no. I, I don't think that that's it. Okay. So your 20 year old self is standing here or tuned into this interview. What? <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I think my 20 year old self was quite often making some good decisions, but sometimes some quick decisions as well. And this is one advice I would <laughs> I would give myself is, is you know, uh, take a bit of time, especially before so important decisions, you know, if, right. even if it feels right, hmm. uh, you know, we sometimes take a decision with our head and our heart and our gut, you know, give it time. And the more time you have, the better the decision is. So that's, that's the only sort of thing. But on the whole, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good with all the big decisions I've made sort of you know for the last 20 years for sure i love that i really appreciate that so talking of all the decisions you've made what projects are on your radar at the moment what what have you got your hands filled with 
in the present space and what if anything can our viewers and listeners take part in well uh, a lot going on actually uh, so i besides teaching my um kung fu class uh my wing chun class uh in in Harrow, london um which is digital on london wing chun kung fu dot com um uh, which is which is really my, my passion and my love is something i do pro bono uh the other two uh, sort of big things are uh white bridge really there's a white bridge inside which is um, my research and consulting operation and then there is white bridge capital which is my uh investment operation mm -hmm. uh which uh, again Investing is something. Investing in the uh, in the stock market is something I've enjoyed for a very long time, uh, and there's there's a martial arts aspect uh, in into that, and, and the discipline, especially the emotional discipline that's required mm -hmm. uh, as the market goes up and down, and and the way you analyze opportunities. So so those two things are on a professional level, uh, something that I'm looking to get. Um, uh, well, expand, take, take to the next level uh, in the coming six or 12 months. Is that something um, that, I mean, your martial arts is, it is your hobby, it's your passion, it's pro bono, as you say. And I think that's a really special thing to point out. I mean, I know that when Angle set up these classes, I was there and uh, he does this because he cares. People walk in from the street, they, he, they pay a nominal fee to help just cover the expenses. Everything that he teaches, his teachings are free. It's, it's the sincerity and the, and the, and the desire to learn that he looks for in his students. And you know, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Angel, it is, it has always been, and it is still open to most classes of human beings who are kind and caring and want to learn something, <laughs> the mind and the body, right? Yes. Yes. Very few are excluded. And tell us about Whitebridge a little bit for a moment. Can people get involved? Are there any links that we can share later on? Right. So uh, Whitebridge Insight, yes. Uh, the uh, website is wbinsight.com. Uh, so that is uh, my research and consulting operation, uh, which has been launched uh, this year. Uh, so prior to my long career with... Uh, Oven and Gartner uh, for almost 20 years in both. This is my sort of new independent venture. So it's very exciting. Uh, so a lot of learning, a lot of new stuff and all the things that we talked about earlier about martial arts come into play here. Uh, so, so yes, there's detail on that website. Uh, it focuses on the telecoms media and the technology industries where I've spent, um, as I said, a good part of two decades. Uh, working at very senior level with uh, some big clients like BT, Vodafone, Apple, Samsung, uh, Ericsson, and Huawei, and sort of nice. taking that consulting and research experience um, now into this new venture. And again, White Bridge Capital, you know, uh, uh, focuses on investing uh, mostly in technology and media organization. Again, using my research and uh, and, 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 and sort of knowledge of these industries and taking it to, you know, to a new level in, in terms of, you know, investing uh, in, in sort of organizations that, um, that are good businesses in, in that part. And again, that's, uh, that's been doing really well. Uh, at the moment, it operates as a family office. Uh, I uh, haven't taken to the step of uh, opening it up to external investors, but that's something... That is certainly on the cards for awesome. uh, for the next four months. Wow, it's powerful! We can make investments in our personal growth and our financial growth, uh, and you've you've got hands in both those areas, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's all about growth. <laughs> it's all about growth. <laughs> it's all about growth. And girl, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, you know, time as I knew it would has gone by so quickly, and we are at the end of our fantastic and highly insightful episode um it just remains for me to thank you for coming on and trusting to be on be on this i know you don't tend to do long formats interviews like this and informal ones and 
as I knew you would, you would just be your authentic self and, um, you've been great. You know, it's been great having you. And, uh, I now well, kind thank of, you very much. it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, uh, as always, uh, uh, to hang out and have this conversation, but thank you for having me. It's been a really interesting conversation and, uh, yeah, uh, I look forward to continuing the conversation. I, I hope so. In fact, um, I would like to have you back on the show. And how about doing an episode on mastery? That's what I'd like to do. Have you back and we'll have a whole episode on mastery. And I know that's, a, that's an area that's close to your heart. Um, you've had many years experience in mastery. I think that'll be a really good topic for people to get their teeth into. So let's, let's, let's do this again. <laughs> let's have you back. Let's talk about that. I need to a fantastic subject for a lot of people Folks yeah. hearing this click in, show your appreciation and interest and give us your thumbs ups if you'd like to see that. Um, and that just remains for me to say an invitation to all of you. We have a couple of wonderful events coming up real soon on top of the martial arts that Angel teaches the Wing Chun Kung Fu that happens on a Monday night at Angel seven o'clock, uh, seven thirty. Seven thirty. Uh and we'll provide details of where that is. On top of that, we have a end of year Christmas mantra therapy event taking place on the 15th of December in London. Stay tuned for the details. We'll keep you all posted. It'll be out on the social media feeds in due course. It should be a real good anti-materialistic, anti-commercial end, spiritually uplifting end to a Christmas uh, that we'll all remember for sure. So the Mantra Therapy Christmas special coming your way. Also calling all men out there, in particular men who've spent 20 or 30 years, 40 years growing up, feeling the pains of family life, had difficulties growing up and finding to earn a living. We are running the Men Powerment Masterclass and Workshops watch out for that. We're running webinars every week. And on the 9th of December, we have a one day masterclass, especially for men to help untangle, undo and release old baggage and equip you with the best kind of fresh tools that you can use to optimize your career, professional and personal lives. That's coming your way. The Men Powerment Academy, look us up on Facebook. That is also another project we got. And just a small heads up and a sneak peek, we are going to our favorite UK destination for retreats, Buckland Hall, in March 8th to 11th. We're going to be doing our four-day legendary detox and transformation retreat. Those of you who've been on it, you sure as hell know how good they are. And this is an invitation for all of you. If you are ready for the challenge to improve yourself and grow, as Angel has been talking about in this interview... Keep those four days booked. 8th to 11th of March, we'll be up in Wales at Buckland Hall for a four-day detox and transformation retreat. More to follow. Folks, thank you so much for joining us and staying till the end. Those of you who haven't, you'll enjoy the replay. Check the links in the comments for how to follow Angel. Find out more about the Wing Chun martial arts that he's passionate about and everything else. And we will see you on the next episode. And Prash and Angel. Namaste. Peace out. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>